This is a picture of 17-year-old Bernadette Walker. In the summer of 2020, she went missing under extremely troubling circumstances from the Cambridgeshire County in East England. After a heated argument with her mother, she was made to spend the night at her grandparents' house. The following morning, on the 18th, she would leave the house. A silver van was waiting for her outside, and the last person she wanted to see was behind the wheel. Sadly, it was most likely the last person she would ever see again. This is the most harrowing tale we've covered thus far, complete with dark secrets, betrayal of the worst kind, and how the discovery of a diary would shed light to the mystery, with damning entries being made up until the day she goes missing. Bernadette Walker was, in all outward appearances, a happy, free-spirited teenage girl, occasionally dyeing her hair different shades of rainbow, though at times leaning towards the gothic. A typical teen still searching for her identity, an overall sweet girl who adorably considered her mother her best friend. Though internally, she was a rather socially awkward person, as stated by her peers, and even to the rare few she would consider a friend, she remained rather distant. She was more comfortable at the computer, so the majority of the people she regarded as close friends were actually people she met online. She was a photography student and was very active in posting her photos to Instagram, Facebook, as well as many other social platforms. But Bernadette had a deep, dark secret, one that she would only share with the pages of her diary. The words she wrote were actually cries for help, because her voice in the real world, to those that should have cared, went wholly unheard. So when most teenagers her age prepared to face the real world, she found herself growing more introverted instead, berating herself at the same time for being such a coward. And it didn't help either when she started developing an unhealthy fear of the dark. Her parents are 38-year-old Sarah Walker, who worked in geriatrics, and 51-year-old Scott Walker, who picked up work on occasion, but a majority of the time they were together, was unemployed. They were the ones that were supposed to protect her, but they were the ones that ultimately failed her. Here's an entry from Bernadette's diary that will give us a clue to the state of the household. Note. This was a large family with at least 10 people, majority kids, living in a five-bedroom home. She said that the other kids mattered more. I love feeling unwanted. I feel nothing right now because I always thought mom would deal with it and it would all go away. Let's go back to July 18th as Bernadette leaves her grandparents' house and sees that familiar silver van and we could only imagine the knot that formed in her stomach when it wasn't her mom picking her up, but it was her father, Scott Walker. But no, he's here telling me I made it up. What kind of parent wouldn't believe their daughter? But it's fine. I'm going to pretend it's okay till I leave home, then I'll block them all out of my life. Scott Walker, who is not Bernadette's biological father, had been s***ly <laughs> her for numerous years up to this point. The diary entry we just heard was written after she had finally had the courage to tell her mom about it. It didn't go exactly as she thought. Told my mom about my dad and the abuse. She called me a liar and threatened to kill me if I told the police. So this was the altercation, which led to Bernadette being sent to the grandparents' house, the parents of Scott Walker. If we read between the lines here, once Bernadette was removed from the house, her mother Sarah must have then told Scott all about their little conversation. And here we can see the motivation why Scott Walker would want Bernadette gone. Six weeks after the missing persons was issued, the police felt they had sufficient evidence to charge and arrest Scott for the murder of Bernadette. Okay. Not just say so. No, well, no, no. 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 We'll explain to her what's happened. We'll explain to her once you get to the yeah, I know, it's all the kids. I mean, we know all about the accusations and stuff. Mm. And two of the boys, they both heard that her saying what she was like about it. What you need to do is let my colleague give you a search, okay? This is what we learn when the case goes to trial. 
Prosecutors indicated a strange living arrangement that Scott and Sarah had. They claimed they were no longer together, though they still lived in the same house, and Sarah was already involved with another man. The last name Walker was only adopted by Sarah under what is called a deed poll, in which she also bestowed upon her children. So Sarah and Scott were not actually married. Sarah's kids, having had Scott in their life at such a young age, had come to acknowledge him as their father. Sarah and Scott would also have four more kids together, the youngest being a six-month-old at the time Bernadette goes missing. To the day in question, Scott picked up Bernadette from his parents' house between 10 to 11 a.m. He claimed Bernadette jumped out of the car and ran away when he pulled over. But if all she did was run away, why hasn't she come back? now that Scott's dirty laundry was aired for all to see. Scott's phone records were even more telling. Coincidentally, he had turned off his phone between 11.23 a.m. and 12.54 p.m., a 91 gap just shortly after picking up Bernadette. His reason was that so his phone would quote-unquote charge faster. But we're going to get back to the phone records in just a bit, as they will provide even more clues. But before we continue, I'd like us to acknowledge our second Patreon member ever, KBG. Good sir, this is for you. So Scott's movements, days after Bernadette went missing, came onto police radar. He was making frequent visits to a storage locker 35 minutes away in the rural area of Fenland. Upon gaining entry to this locker, police discover Bernadette's backpack, which she was wearing the day she went missing. How could they tell? Because inside her bag was her diary, which had been logged and dated up to the time she went missing. I guess Scott didn't figure that the very thing he was trying to hide was right there, laid out for detectives to find. If he had checked that bag even once, this case would have gone completely different. His reason why he was in possession of her backpack was that when she jumped out of the van, she had left it behind so he tossed it into storage. The next simple question for Scott I can imagine is this. If all she did was run away, why would you throw her bag into storage that was 35 minutes away like you knew she was never coming back? Why not just take it home and hope for the best? Well, that's because it's most likely he turned off his phone, did whatever he did to Bernadette, drove her to this storage, and left her body there, making repeated trips back to the locker to dispose of her. Now let me introduce you to a woman named Jill, who made for a damning character witness against Scott. She was Scott's first wife, the one he had left for their neighbor Sarah. She describes him as being a sex-crazed, jealous, possessive narcissist who she would consider dangerous, especially when people didn't listen to him. Interestingly, they were still legally married. So basically, he got his things and moved next door to the neighbor who gave him what he needed. And his rap sheet consisted of harassment, breaching a non-molestation order, and assault. Now let's get back to Scott's phone. The prosecution points out that it was switched off between 11.23 a.m. and 12.54 p.m., an oddity because records showed that he never did this before until that day. When the phone is reconnected to the network, the first person he dials is none other than Sarah Walker, in which they had a nine-minute conversation. Lisa Wilding of the Queen's Council, the prosecutor states, as you will come to see from the evidence, the only sensible conclusion that can be drawn from the telephone call is that Scott Walker told his wife that he had killed Bernadette and needed her help immediately to cover up B's disappearance and death. So the day the police picked up Scott, they also arrested Sarah. This trash mother not only allowed a pedophile rapist into her home around her children, but chose to side with him when her own daughter said that he was raping her repeatedly. And the final betrayal, 
she was helping that same man who had now just murdered her daughter by giving him an alibi as well as help mislead the police for his sake. This is what she did, according to the prosecution. Since the day Bernadette went missing, neither her phone or any of her social media accounts were ever accessed again. Even her bank account remains untouched. But before the missing persons report was filed, Bernadette's phone sent this text to Sarah. I'm going to Luke's. Luke being an ex-boyfriend of Bernadette's. Sarah shares this with the operator who is filing the missing persons. This astute operator will ask her an appropriate question and you be the judge if Sarah's answer is what a worried mother would do. Amateur, please, how can we help? Hiya, it's Mrs. Walker. Um, I'm just ringing to report my 17-year-old daughter, uh, missing. Okay, I'll get a report for you there. How long has she been missing? Well, she ran away on Saturday lunchtime, but I knew where she was until she stopped messaging at like, uh, 1 a.m. Uh, yesterday morning. Right. So she stopped messaging at 1 a.m. yesterday morning? Yeah, and I, sort of, I gave her the day to sort of stew it out a bit, because she, it's not the first time she's done it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I've, um, it's become a, I've become aware of the fact that she's not where she told us she was, so obviously I'm, that's why I'm phoning now. And she went, I'm not going home, I've told you. And she just got out and ran. Okay. And he pulled over to roll That's the cigarette. Fine, but then you knew where she was, or you thought you knew where she was. Is that right? Yes, yes. Where did you think she has been for the last couple of days? Well, she messaged me and said, I'm a Luke, which is her ex-boyfriend. Uh, I'm just looking. Uh, I'm, going, I'm going to Luke's. That's what she said. So did you go to Luke's and see whether she was there, or did you make contact with Luke or his parents? I I didn't know because his parents are um, Polish and I, she doesn't speak a word of English. But um, she's been to Luke's before and was confirmed she, that she's there. Like we've, we've been you know, out. Just word for that she was there. Is that right? I did. Yeah. Have you been to Luke's house to see whether she's there. No, because I took her word that she was there, because last time she went okay, there, Okay, but when wasn't. you found out she wasn't there, have you attended Luke's house to see what he knows? No, I've spoken to him on Insta, uh, Instagram through message, and he's assured me she's not there, and I spoke to her friend. The operator had to reiterate the question about going to Luke's three separate times because it sounds unbelievable that a worried parent wouldn't even do the simplest task of going to the last place her daughter said she would be at. You can sense that the operator, who might have been a parent herself, was concerned about the story she was hearing. And I'll just state the obvious. Any concerned parent would have had to resist the urge to kick down Luke's door. Various other text messages were sent from Bernadette's phone. Even her social media friends received some odd, out-of-place messages. Sarah was quick to point out all these interactions to the police as a clear indication that her daughter had only run away. The police, taking the lack of worry from a mother at face value, set the urgency to find Bernadette at only medium risk. It wouldn't be until another seven weeks will it be properly elevated to a high risk. So, if you guessed already that Sarah was the one sending these messages to impede the investigation, then please go get yourself a cookie. Because before sending Bernadette away to the grandparents' house that day, Sarah had taken her phone away. So there was no way she could have texted anyone. We know this because under further interrogation, Sarah would eventually crack and admit to all of this. She was charged with two counts of perverting justice, but claims she only did it because she really believes that Bernadette only ran away. Sarah Walker was found guilty and given six years in prison. Scott Walker was found guilty of murder and given life in prison with a minimum of 32 years. He still proclaims his innocence to this very day. This case is troubling in so many ways, Dad. It leaves me unsettled. The first would be that Bernadette had to go through that nightmare she outlined in her diary, and the other, just having a mother that basically didn't give a shit about her. 
But it makes me a bit uneasy also that Bernadette's body has never been found, which robs the finality for the people that actually cared about her, like her brother Anthony, who is still searching to this day and praying that his sister will be found, in whatever condition that would be. Anyways, Dad, I love you, and I'll be back again shortly with another story. <laughs>